Good morning, Outlets, and welcome to another episode of Shameless Plugs. As always, I am J.A. George, and I am joined by... Samantha the Writer! We have... <laughs> We have a very special episode today. Um, I don't mean very special in the way that you would have very special episodes of sitcoms in the 80s where you... No, I mean, all we have is a basement studio. We're not that cool yet. No, we are not that cool. But we have a very special guest today. So it is a very special episode. I am excited. Um, our guest today is Kratos Jones. Um, some of you may know him. If you follow us on Twitter, you might have run into him. You might have seen some of his work that he has posted there. Um... I'm excited about this episode because Kratos is a very interesting guy. I have this image in my head, even though I've seen pictures and everything, I have this image in my head of Kratos as the old school Hemingway type writer with like whiskey and, you know, smoking cigars and everything like that old yeah. school style of writer. So Kratos, that is how I picture you for the record. So even though I've seen pictures, that's the image I have of you in my head. So exactly, exactly how I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first off, Kratos, thank you for joining I'm in us. A smoking jacket. I'm in my smoking jacket right now. Nice. Nice. Man. Nice. I'm not cool enough to pull one of those off, so. I have a blanket. That's yeah. about as close as I'm getting. <laughs> it's, it's 104 degrees outside, and you're wrapped up in a blanket. This is true. Yes, <laughs> yes. it is. It is. Oh, yeah, we didn't do the weather report for Cincinnati. No. It is hot. Yeah, it's very hot and buggy Ugh. here. Very hot and muggy. Very hot. Here. Anyway, moving on. I'm in, I'm in southeast Texas. It's hotter than hell here. Today. I was <laughs> yeah. going to say, I'm sure, Kratos, you have a speed on that front. <laughs> Probably win. Probably. So, I think let's just start off the conversation. Kratos, tell us about, you know, your writing, what you like to do. Um, just what would you like our listeners, what would you like an audience to know about you and writing? <laughs> I write everything from music. Uh, I actually play several instruments. I write lyrics um, to poetry to sci-fi, just about every genre. You know, I do screenplays, so it's really like nothing that I don't write. Um, I even do some freelance stuff for marketing, like you and I talked about, and mm -hmm. um, just whatever I can put a pen to, man. I, I write everything. <laughs> I do it while I'm hanging sheetrock and, you know, finishing sheetrock, so. See, that's one yeah, of the things, I do it. that's one of the things that's so interesting to me is just that idea that there are writers everywhere. Mm -hmm. There are, it doesn't really matter what your background is. It doesn't matter. I mean, it it doesn't matter. No, if you have, has, if you yeah. have stories that you need to tell, you have stories that you need to tell. Yeah. Well, I have several college degrees, man. I used to be an office guy. Um, I just don't like it. So yeah. I run my own business, you know, carpentry, sheet rock, stuff like that. And, uh, and the ink flows a lot better when I'm sweating. So yeah. that's, that's how I do it. And I, I told you I lost about uh, 150 pounds um, after getting the hell out of the office and getting out in, in this heat and, you know, moving a little bit. Right. Man, that is the dream right there. Like, to just do your thing and be able to write and support yourself and be able to write and doing what you love. Man, mm -hmm. I need to get out of the office. Yeah, the, the check was better, but... <laughs> <laughs> Happiness, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so... Obviously, you do a lot of different kinds of writing. Is there one, whether it's genre or format or anything, that you enjoy more than the other types of writing you do, or would you say that it's kind of all equal for you? Um, usually, supernatural creeps into everything. Angels and demons and uh, <laughs> mythologies, things like that. There's uh, really no way I can write anything without having supernatural in mind. So, I believe that you know, either everything has spiritual significance or nothing does. So whenever I write, I try to write like it does, like it means something deeper than I'm putting on the paper. So that helps me to uh, kind of, I don't know, I'm a weird guy, so my, my style is a little bit different than just about anybody that I come across mm -hmm. uh, because of that one thing, is that there's always something peeking from behind whatever is is uh, on the page. You know, an angel, a demon, or, you know, Loki or Thor, or what the hell ever. 
<laughs> I think that one of the things that has come up on this podcast a lot is how it, like is depth, and mm-hmm. I think the fact that you find that spiritual side, whatever's peeking out behind, like you said, I feel like that would give your work like an incredible amount of depth. Do you find that when you're writing, you're you're seeing that 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 is one of those things that you can latch onto and really help develop your characters and all of that? Well, I, I kind of like the Zen thing, you know, where. You uh, you jump from spiritual to physical uh, in rhythm almost. Um, a lot of I, it's hard to say because, like I said, um, when I'm chopping wood, to me that's spiritual, you know. Um, so it's not a or when I'm pouring a cup of coffee, everything has a spiritual meaning. Like I don't know what it is, but I just accept the fact that it's there. So of course, when I'm writing. And when I'm plotting and, you know, trying to plan, um, everything down to my log line or, or my, you know, little blurb or whatever you want to call it is has a spiritual meaning. I don't just, I look at it as something bigger than a, a sentence or bigger than a paragraph or bigger than a chapter or whatever. To me, it, it has to be self-sustaining. It has to be, it has to have a soul. It has to have a life to it or or what the hell am I doing, you know? Um, if I'm going to put something out into the world and, and let other people, you know, see parts of me, uh, I might as well do it with, you know, all my electricity, all my life, you know, put it out there, you know, properly. So. A, a lot of what you're saying, for, for one of the story ideas that I have kicking around in my head. I've started writing it somewhat. I haven't developed it as much as I'd like, but I've done a lot of reading on Buddhism. And a lot of what you're saying right now actually sounds to me like some of the ideas, some of the philosophies related to Buddhism, the idea of whatever you're doing, be focused on it and commit to it 100%. Be in that moment. If you're chopping wood, you are chopping wood. You're not chopping wood and... um, I don't even know what you would be doing while chopping wood, so that was a really bad metaphor. Tap dancing. Of mine. Tap yes. dancing. Well, I get up every morning and exercise outside. So before I was doing, I could pull up about 50 push-ups, and then I'd have to stop. Mm-hmm. But if I just count one, 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 and I just hit a little counter with my fingers so I can check it later, mm-hmm. uh, I can get up to like 132 to 137 is the highest I've been. Right. Um, as long as I don't count those high numbers and I stay in that one push-up in that one moment, mm-hmm. then I can do them and do them and do them. But once the numbers start to get higher, it eats, you know, it eats at my mind and it causes my body to just shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a real Alan Watts junkie. I listen to uh, all of his lectures <laughs> and he uh, hammers down a lot on uh, Buddhist and, and Zen and Hindu uh, I like to, to remove the Zen from the religion and just kind of focus on that specific thing. You know, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm not a Hindu, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, sure. I'm into the Zen part. Mm-hmm. Man, I feel like as a writer, there would be a lot more successful people if all of our pages were numbered one. <laughs> and if yeah, you just right. focus on I, that <laughs> one page, that one I, moment that you're working in, I think uh, that there would be a lot more people out there who are like, oh, yeah, I can write one page, mm-hmm. and I can write another one page, and I can write another one page. So that's an incredible philosophy. It, it really is because I I see this a lot, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. So this is not me just saying that I'm innocent mm-hmm. and I'm putting this on other people, but – it's very easy to get caught up in your word count and worry Mm -hmm. about the things like, well, is an agent going to take this? No, this is too many words. I need to pair it back. It's so easy to get caught up in your word count or your page count or whatever else and lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that is really an incredible philosophy. Yeah, I mean, and also, I wrote this down. um, Somebody's probably said something similar before, but I wrote... uh, uh, the moment that my burden becomes, oh wait, the moment that I learn to love my burden, it ceases to be my burden. Mm-hmm. So if I learn to love the struggle, if I learn to love the strain of it, um, then it's not strain anymore. It's not struggle anymore. It's just doing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Yep. So that's, and that's, that's a damn hard thing to do yeah. uh, a lot of the time, but it's 
worth it if he can pull it off. And and also with writing, I believe it's a transfer of energy. Same with art. I think that the mood that we're in when we write is very important. It's not just putting spectacular. Anybody can write, and anybody can learn to write well. Um, you take some classes, you learn some devices. Great, great. But the mood that you're in when you write has to go into your writing. You know, we don't do anything without our minds contributing and, and our soul contributing to that thing. So you hand, you're not handing somebody a book or a poem, you're handing them energy. And whatever your energy is, they're going to suck that up. And, you know, you have to kind of be responsible with that and, and not put crap into people's heads. You have to kind of do the best that you can and be in the right mind and think, you know, benevolent thoughts, even if it's horror or whatever, you've got to have to, you know, say I'm, I've got a theme and I've got a, you know, meaning behind this when you put it out there. But I think that changes everything, you know, because that, that energy transfer is, is a good, wholesome, real thing. So based on that line of thought, that actually, I have a question about that, and I've never actually thought about this topic before, but based on what you're saying, do you feel like you have a responsibility as a writer on that front in terms of what you're putting out there? Do you feel like there, you have a responsibility to your readers? Well, it kind of takes care of itself, John, because if you have a responsibility to yourself, you want to get published, you know? Mm -hmm. And if the slusher gets your piece, you know, and reads it and feels like crap, it's not going any higher. You're never going to talk to the agent. You're never going to talk to the publisher. True. Um, so it, the responsibility can be selfish or it can be selfless. You know, it's a little bit of both. Because <laughs> if you sit down and hate writing, you know, if I went into a house and hated doing sheetrock and just hated it, uh, it wouldn't look good and my customers would never be happy. And it's the same thing with writing. If you sit down and you dread your hour of writing a day or whatever you do to yourself, um, if you dread that and it sucks and you want to get up and you're all over Twitter or worried about something else or on Facebook looking at what somebody had for dinner and not paying attention to what you're putting on the page, it's going to suck, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be all in. You have to be right there putting your energy into your art or... And that's just what I believe, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the proof's in the pudding. We'll see what I get published and what I get optioned, but that's really the mindset I try to take in. And again, it's damn hard. Mm -hmm. Nobody's in a great mood all the time. No. no. You get home and your family aggravates the hell out of you, and you, uh, you know, your customers have been jerks all day, and you go sit down, your boss has been in your ear, and you have to find a way to say, this is my good time, this is Writing is my playtime. Writing is my happy time. Right. And if you're playing while you're writing, then everybody wants to play with you. You know? But mm -hmm. if you're working your ass off while you're writing, nobody wants to work their ass off to read it. You know? Right. So that's, that's just the way I see it. I think that kind of plays into mm -hmm. something that Samantha and I were actually talking about the other day. You see people who are writing because they know there's a certain topic that they could write about yep. to get published. Mm -hmm. It's not what they, they're not writing what they love. It's writing as a job instead of a passion, which, you know, if that's your thing, that's your yeah. thing. I'm not judging. I am not trying to look down on those people, but it's yeah. just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's not. Doing that, stop doing that right now <laughs> and write what you love. It's it... ridiculous. You're, you're crucifying yourself for no good reason. I was going to say it's not something I personally could do. I know I would be miserable doing it, but <laughs> I can't really disagree with you, what you said there, Kratos. No, I can't either. Yeah. I can't either. I, I think <laughs> it... I made a read. I made a read for everybody. Anybody who puts something in front of me, I'll read it, and I'll give you an honest review. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like what you're doing, it comes out in the first two pages. You don't get that two pages without saying, this is not you. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is not your voice. This is not authentic. This just sucks, you know? And it doesn't suck because you're a bad writer. Mm -hmm. It sucks because, you know, you hate what you're doing and the story is just usually so derivative of something else. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, agreed. I've already read Lord of the Rings, you know? Mm -hmm. I've already read <clears throat> The 
classics. I don't want to read them again in a watered-down version that you came up with one night at your house. Right. Um, you know, Tolkien is dead, you know, and his, his work is written, and it's good, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and the same with the rest of them. You know, they're, they were the masters, and they're, they're the ones that we look up to and follow and, and try to emulate, but you have to remember that what they were doing when they were doing it was original. It wasn't something that they had seen on TV that, you know, Peter Jackson or whoever directed and, you know, had this image in their head that they were going to vomit back out onto the page. And that's that's where we're at. We're so inundated yeah. with, with imagery. I'm mm-hmm. sorry to filibuster you guys. You, no, 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 you're... you're, you're... you're... You're you good. are totally fine because you are not saying anything that we haven't said to one another off the air. Yeah, absolutely. Like you are. We're so flooded with with energy. It's that energy that comes from television and movies and whatever the podcasts you listen to, and you've got information flowing into your head all day, and you have to find a way to turn all that crap off and speak. You know, speak from from an original place inside of yourself. Like, I'll write about dancing vegetables for an hour just because <laughs> I'm never going to show it to anybody, but it, nobody writes about it. You know what I mean? Uh, you're um, about to trigger a rant, Kratos, from me. I'm just warning you. You're about to trigger, not because I disagree with anything you're saying, but because you're pushing buttons, a button that really irritates me in general with publishing and queries and all that kind of thing. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rant. I'm just gonna start the rant. Here he goes. Here he goes. I'm sorry. I don't care if agents want me to put a comp in my letter. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to put a comparison. I am writing a superhero story, but that does not mean I am writing the Avengers. I am not writing the Avengers. I'm writing the superhero story that I've had in my head since I was 12 that I'm finally putting on the damn page. This is the first time I've cursed on the air this too. This is yes. So, go, John. Go. I, I mean. It irritates me that people get obsessed with comparing themselves to other works with putting comps in every one of their tweets and every one of their okay. queries because you should be writing something that's completely you and completely original. And I, I can't, I don't care if it limits my odds of getting an agent. I don't care if it limits my odds of getting published. I cannot put a comp because I am not writing a story that I am mimicking anybody else's work. I can't. It, <clears throat> I get so many reviews on my own, the screenplay you read, yeah. comparing me to Neil Gaiman. And <laughs> I love Neil Gaiman, but mm-hmm. I'm not him, and mm-hmm. he's not me, and we're not right. anything alike. We're both in a supernatural mindset. Mm-hmm. Don't compare me to that guy. Yeah. That's doing him a disservice and me a disservice. Yeah, Look agreed. Look at it for what it is. You right. know? Agreed. It, it is what it is. It is what's inside of me. It's not, you know, yeah. me emulating mm-hmm. Gaiman or who the hell ever else. Right. I love Christopher Moore. Christopher Moore has probably left an imprint on my brain because mm-hmm. I've read every word that he's written. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's it's not me trying to you know uh, mimic his work. Mm-hmm. It's just that the guy has influenced me. When you play music, um, you know I used to my music used to sound like Rancid or the Mighty Boss songs or. Whatever. That's and part of why we bonded, away. if I remember correctly. We were both talking mm-hmm. about punk music and how it, you know, the had influenced some of the scenes in our work. Yeah, absolutely. And it, <laughs> it does. It influences everything in my work. It's, it's, it was my cool growing up music. Mm-hmm. So, um, but my music sounded like those guys and everybody had to mention it, but it was completely different. With the voice, it was a completely different voice. I didn't come from the cities they came from. Right. I didn't go through the things they went to, uh, went through, and I didn't have the friends that they had. Mm-hmm. We, we had things in common. Yeah. We lost friends on the street. We fought in bars. You know, mm-hmm. we, we, sang, we got this drunk with our buddies. <laughs> um, whatever. We fell in love. We fell out. All the same stuff, but you write about it. In your, from your own experience, from right. your own heart, from your own, you know. Well, it, and I think it's those, bullshit. it's those shades, it's those nuances that separate stories. I mean, it's the right. the little touches of your own experience that influence how your story is different. I mean, that's what I think it all boils down to in the end. Yeah, well, I don't know if you've read my writing, but I can't be the same anyway. I, I, I have. I have mm-hmm. a problem. 
I, <laughs> I read the uh, screenplay that you sent yeah, us. Yeah, I did as well. So and, Yeah, uh, so mm -hmm. I read that. I read some of like the, the poetry and so on that you posted on Twitter. So um, do we want to talk a little bit about the screenplay and what you're working on now? Do you want to, I guess, um, is what I should say. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the screenplay, um, I've been shopping hard. Uh, I've got it in front of several producers, several directors, uh, and several companies, a couple big companies. Uh, I've gotten past, my queries come back about 70%. Um, okay. I, I get an answer on 70% of my queries that's been pretty steady for the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, it's not always a, it's not always the greatest answer, it, uh, but that's that's not a just standard no. You know, like mm -hmm. we want to see this, we want to see more. Um, usually happens. Uh, so I do pretty well with that, and I've got a lot of people looking ahead to the, the screenplay you read, mm -hmm. and it, it's uh, it's it's a tough road to go. I mean, uh, if you think publishers are hard, you know, you get into these. Uh, movie companies and these networks, and it's they'll beat you to death, man. They'll they'll have you change a word, a comma, or you know, uh, you know, your format was off on this page. There were two spaces when there should have been one, or this was capitalized and shouldn't have been. You know, it's a very specific format, and they'll they'll kick your ass on the format alone. Mm -hmm. So that's been my, you know, I love the story. It's it's angels and demons and purgatorials and, you know, the mm -hmm. truckers and bikers and whatever the hell, you know, whatever yeah. popped into my mm -hmm. head is in there. Right. And, um, and there's going to be more. And I, I think that the characters are endearing. Uh, I want to share them with people. Um, so that's, that's my drive, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just something that I love. I can, you know, I can go find a log line and read it, but really I'd rather just say that you know, if you want to read it, email me. I'll, I'll let you read it. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is what it is. It's already registered with, you know, with the WGA and all that stuff. So um, <clears throat> it's it's my guts on the page. Uh, and it's probably, probably what beats me up is the poetry of it because I'm a little too artistic for the bare bones that are, that screen writing readers are <laughs> accustomed to. I put a little bit too much meat on the page. I need to learn to streamline it a little bit more. So that's what I'm working on. So I guess uh, my question is, and there's more than one answer to the question I'm about to answer. Do you need to streamline it? Do you need to? Yes. I was thinking the exact same thing. Do you need to streamline it or has it just not gotten in front of the right, right. Per mm -hmm. the right reader yet? Well, you know, you work both angles. I'll streamline it for one guy, but that's not the finished work. I mean, the finished work is, is what it is, and I can send it in to the guild whenever I decide, whenever it gets options, mm -hmm. and say, you know, let them put the final stamp on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll be changing it for, for this lady, and I'll be, uh, you know, getting it out to a new guy on the other hand, and I've got... I've got 12 screenplays done. Uh, this is just, this is my single teleplay um, that I finished. I've got uh, this plus 11 full features. Hmm. So I've got a lot of work into it and a lot of people looking at a lot of things in different genres. And I'm constantly, it comes in, it goes out. It comes mm -hmm. in, it goes out. So, so just, once, you, once you get done with your basic story, you got to play the game with these people or you know, you're not going to get it made. And that's, I want to see the movie. That's, mm -hmm. that's my end game. Just like you want to read the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and it's not going to be the book until it's the book. I mean, it's got to go through a lot of people. It's got to go through a lot of processes. It's got to go through a lot of refinement from the first draft to, you know, what's in between the pretty covers on the shelves or, or people are downloading onto their Kindles. It's, it's a long, drawn-out thing. And you want to see what the final, you know, work is going to be and what it's going to be like. And, you know, yeah, and it, it's a thrill, you know, sitting in front of the big screen watching my movie would be a thrill <laughs> or sitting in front of the TV with my buddies watching, you know, the third episode and talking 
uh, all the shit about it or whatever and, <laughs> you know, going through all the details and, you know, what we think is going to happen next, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I would completely forget that I wrote it and <laughs> sit there and enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and that's what I look forward to with the writing, you know, with the novels that I'm writing, with the everything. When I read a magazine, I get published in magazines a lot, my poetry. Uh, I, I don't go to the copy or, or the page thinking this is mine. I just, I read the whole magazine. I read all the other writers, and, um, and I just run through mine like I'm running through theirs because I want the experience that everybody else is getting from. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't want it to just be selfish, me, me, me. It's, it's a whole work. When you right. put a magazine together, yeah. it's a playlist, you know, and it's it's something that you should read because the person or the group of people who did the artwork and the craft of putting this thing together in in the order they did and the way that they did and type print and all this stuff I don't understand, you know, <laughs> that all matters, you know, yeah. it's all part of the arts and craft. Like, craft is is knowing, like, you got to talk about, what do you call it? Plotting and... Panting? Plotter or pantser, yeah. Okay, so I see, you just said to me, arts and crafts. Your craft <laughs> is, is knowing what you're doing, knowing all the rules, mm-hmm. uh, knowing, you know, your basic plan. But the art of it is, you know, the 100,000 split-second decisions that you make while you're running through that craft because it's going to change. I don't mm-hmm. care how well mm-hmm. you plot. Yeah. Yeah. You're oh, yeah. going to have to change. You're going to have to read and react. You're going to have to bend the line. You're going to have to change. And if you don't, you're going to be boring. Well, um, yes. Yes. Agreed. Yes, agreed. You know, it's spontaneity. There's, you know, not one without the other. As a plotter, I don't... As, as a died in the wall plotter i even have to admit that i completely agree with that statement it's if you don't react if you're if you aren't doing things that surprise yourself you are robotic and boring mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> well imagine if you know starry night the painting you know imagine mm-hmm. if he had planned that perfectly it wouldn't be beautiful no you no. know it wouldn't be what it is mm-hmm. it's his brand of crazy mm-hmm. that we needed to see uh, and his, you know, his expression of what is, it was like a mixture of his eyes and his heart and every other part of his being going into these stars and, you know, this landscape, the scream. The scream is not well thought out. Somebody sat down and, I don't even know who the artist is on that one, but somebody sat down and just drew that, you know, mm-hmm. and painted it. And it, it came out awesome. It, it gives a, a raw nasty feeling when you look at it because mm-hmm. it's so mm-hmm. you know rough yeah. you know and if you don't have your rough edges at all if you don't have any texture in what you're doing uh then nobody nobody likes flat man nobody likes mm-hmm. no curves nobody likes that mm-hmm. that's not good nope you gotta have some kind of movement you gotta have some kind of rolling waves in, in the work or you know it's like getting on your surfboard and sitting in the middle of a glassy lake. What, what fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about it that yeah, way, but agreed. so true, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry I ran. It just happened. I don't mean, like I said, I don't mean to fill a bus to you it, it No, is, no. no it's, it's a conversation. No, it's, it, this is great. I think... Um, I think the nice thing and what I always, always love about having guests on our podcast is the perspective they bring to things because, Mm -hmm. you know, Jay, George and I sit here and we have our perspective on writing and we Mm -hmm. talk about it and we share it with people and we hope that it helps inspire people or people get angry enough at us to disagree and do their own thing, whichever, whichever direction they go is fine. But then we bring on another perspective Mm -hmm. and maybe that helps put someone in the right place with their writing. Maybe that says something to them that they can take and run with and it it makes their day and their writing even better than it was yesterday well, so I, I, I think it's awesome and i think that having guests on the show to the point that kratos was making mm-hmm. to the point that you're making 
it adds texture. Absolutely. It's a different feel than the conversation you and mm -hmm. I would have. It, it prompts new questions in my mind. Uh -huh. It's, you know, some cases it's the ways that I hadn't thought of because it is a different perspective. It's, you know, it, it, for me personally, and I don't want to speak for you, Samantha, I don't want to speak for any listener, but it prompts me to think about the way that I write in different ways having these mm -hmm. conversations. Yeah. So, some of which I think... Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, some of which reinforces what I already believe, and some of which forces me to look at things differently. And I, I think I think that we can always use a refresh on the way that we see the world, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're so into the thing that you're working on, and you're just in it, and you're enjoying the moment, and you're in it, and you're in it, and you're in it, and then you come up for air, and you go, oh... Well, I didn't see it that way before. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back and you can get in it and be in it and be in it and approach it in a different way and tackle a problem maybe that you didn't know was there or you didn't know how to get through. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that we talk about as an industry a lot, and it's across our entire culture, our, our, our entire society, one of the things that is on a lot of people's minds that's talked about a lot now, and you and I do this at mm -hmm. work, Samantha, is diversity oh, having yeah. diverse you know people of diverse backgrounds but one of the things and this is coming from somebody who is multiracial mm -hmm. i am black i am greek i think to a certain extent we do a disservice by focusing on some of the bigger areas of diversity diversity of thought diversity of experience i think is just as important yes race plays a role in that religion you know uh sexual orientation all of those things play a role but experiences play just as big mm -hmm. of a role it could be socioeconomic status it could be all kinds of different things mm -hmm. that lead to diversity of thought geographic location there's so uh, many it different depends on, depends on who loves you and who hates you oh, yeah yeah because you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're both out there no matter what you are or who you are mm -hmm. there's going to be somebody out there that doesn't like you mm -hmm. there's going to be somebody out there who does you're going to run into both of them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, every day. Completely agree. <laughs> yeah, I, try to, I try to love everybody, but, you know, there are people who piss me off. So, you know, politicians, yeah. this sort of thing. I, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. People, people who like them, they don't like them. People who hate them, they hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, very true. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I have a, if I have a, I would say that's if you're fair. Lying, if, you're, if you're lying for a living, you got to work on that. You're, you know, yeah. you're kind of off the, the human path there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. <laughs> so is there anything, I know we've, we've covered a lot in this conversation, mm -hmm. is there any one thing that you would want a listener to take away from, from your work or what we've talked about today? What is the one thing you would want people to take away from you? instead of, you know, make it more complex, just remove all the stress and pressure and, and, and craziness, all the crap that you put on yourself to be this or that kind of writer and sit down and write from your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, um, John Truby's book, uh, Anatomy of Story, is, is a good book for, for plotters, um, but it's also a good book for, you know, read and react. Uh, right. That guy's a genius. Everyone should read that book uh, because it, it breaks down themes, it breaks down ideas, and it, it tells you to plan your ass off, but it also tells you to be ready at any time to change that plan, mm -hmm. you know, because spontaneity is art, and that's the way it works. And also, uh, you know, like, who cares what you stop worrying about what people think of you? you stop worrying what people think of you and and you like you, if you like yourself, you know, they'll start to like you too. Uh, it, it's, if you're having fun and you're playing, the other kids are going to want to come play with you. Yeah. But if you're sitting in the corner of the playground digging in the dirt with a stick, you know, giving everybody the stink eye, you're the last pick for kickball or whatever. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been that way since we were born. So... So be happy, be cool, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life, and write. And, you know, if you're a writer, write. If you're not, do whatever the hell you do. Yeah. And, and do the best you can with it. Just stop asking people and telling people and worrying about people and all the different, you know, and stop stealing people's damn work. 
you know? Quit looking at people <laughs> who are popular and trying to be like them. Yeah. They didn't get popular by trying to be like somebody else. Uh, you know, they came up with that stuff on their own. Don't right. steal their work. You're reinforcing things that we've talked about on this show. Yeah, so you know you are preaching to a, a very yeah. receptive choir yeah. right now. We've <laughs> we've talked about some similar things on here about how you have to love what you're doing, and that is going to show through if you love it. And you have to be you because <laughs> your story is your story. You mm -hmm. are the only one who can tell it. You're the only one who can get that passion to tell it. So mm -hmm. be you. Do your thing. Write your story. And if you don't, you're going to suck for everybody else. Yep. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if, you're not, if you're not yourself, if you're not happy, nobody wants to hang out. You know, nobody right. wants to come to your house and be miserable for an hour. Yeah. They want to, you know, play cards or talk or sing or whatever you're doing. Yeah. They don't want to come over and just stare at you while you're sad. That sucks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And that's, and that's what it is when you're when you're writing and you're sad. Nobody wants to you know read that. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to see your misery on the page. Keep that yeah. to yourself. And, <laughs> you know, maybe you're not a writer if it's the worst thing in the world for you to sit down and write. Maybe you're something else. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Go paint or you know build something or you know be an insurance guy. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. It's like, it's like a fish trying to climb a tree. It, it ain't going to work, you know. So, no, I'm... It, doesn't mean he's a bad, it doesn't mean he's a bad fish. And I stole that from Einstein, so everybody knows. But, you know, if, if you expect a fish to climb a tree, it's always going to look like an idiot. You know? Mm -hmm. So if you expect someone who's not a writer to write, it, they're always going to look like an idiot. Or worse. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Shameless Plugs podcast, we uh, have three questions that we like to ask all of our guests, so we are going to ask those mm -hmm. to you. For the second time ever. For the ever. second time ever. Yes. Um, and the first one is, and I feel like this question has already been answered, but I have to ask it anyway, so yeah. either J.A. George or myself can do a victory dance, which mine will not happen today. Um, <laughs> ah, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, no, we'll go see. ahead. <clears throat> so, are you a plotter or are you a pantser? That's, yeah, that's what, what I thought I he was going to yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. To, I mean, we, uh, to a certain extent, everybody yeah, is. I, yeah, yeah. To a certain extent, everybody right. is. But I think that. Well, uh, you know, if you're going to, let's say you're a cartographer, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you know the basic play out of the land. You're going to walk or, or take a, a raft through, and, and you're going to look it over, and you're going to work it out. But it's basically unknown territory. So some yeah. of your trigonometry and calculations and all that stuff, whatever those guys do, it's going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get there, the mountain's not going to be that tall or that short or, you know, maybe two of your, for us in, in our work, maybe two of your characters sound exactly like one another. Mm -hmm. You have to remove one. Maybe, you know, something's going to be off when you get there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to adjust for that. That doesn't mean you shouldn't plot. I believe in running from, you know, that one sentence description all the way through, uh, and knowing how your story is going to end, which for me changes anyway, but mm -hmm. um, I believe in knowing it before I get there, and then I end up in a read and react mode, mm -hmm. which I do with my work daily, so it's kind of like my natural mode. Uh, when something pops up, I don't get mad or blame anybody or blame myself or whatever, I just fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there's... And that's and then you move on, fix it, move on, fix it, move on. And, but if you didn't have a, a general idea of what you were going to do, uh, it might come out, you know, extremely chaotic and hard for people to follow. Mm -hmm. So they're both they both have their merit. They're both important things, you know. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. So you guys are both important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, the second question is, um, we have noticed that there are certain locations, mm -hmm. sometimes inconvenient locations, in which you get your best ideas. Yeah. Shower. Car. 
at least for us, that's yes. where most of our best ideas come from. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you have a location in which you get your best ideas, or an activity that you're doing, and you're just like, oh, that is the idea, I need to go write it down right now? Well, I don't need to go write it down, but if I don't work, I don't write. I gotta sweat, or there's no ink. That's mm -hmm. me. Uh, I'll go out and chop wood for an hour just before I do my hour of writing. Mm -hmm. Or I'll go, you know, I like to carry logs around and build things. And I got a nice big piece of land where I live, so I'll run around and make rock ovens and, and silly stuff like that and get myself sweating really, really good. But there's a rhythm to work. There's a rhythm to a shovel. There's a rhythm to an axe. And as we all know, there's a rhythm to a dialogue and a rhythm to a description. And once that rhythm gets in my mind, or a rhythm to a verse of a song, of course, once that rhythm gets into my mind, that's when I start writing. Mm. Right. And, and I hear the rhythm, and usually I'll write one voice. If I'm doing dialogue, it'll be one voice, and I'll fill in the blanks, you know, with another voice. But I'll find the rhythm of, of one character, the character that I want to be, you know, the point of emphasis, and... And I'll find their rhythm and swing it with my axe or run it with my drywall knife or, mm -hmm. you know, swing it with my hammer or, you know, my, my nail gun, whatever I'm doing. I try to find that rhythm. I'm not like some of the guys that I've worked with before keep the radios blaring. Um, I don't do it. And uh, there's more interesting things in the quiet for me than there is in the noise. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to those songs when I'm driving down the road or chilling at my house. Um, but the quiet has a lot to say. You know, your mind actually starts talking to you when there's no TV, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's no radio, and there's no internet yep. banging away at your head. Mm -hmm. So if I got both my hands, my eyes, all my senses focused on the work that I'm doing, my subconscious just starts leaking in, you know, and and that's where the stories come from. That's where the ideas and, and the rhythms and the... Uh, Everything that, that goes into writing a piece, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's work. It's always been work. If, if I really, like when I was working in the office, I'd have to go home and hit the punching bag for 30 minutes before I'd sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, if I didn't, there would be, there would be no, there would, it would just run dry. There'd be nothing. Mm -hmm. But as it is, I'm working my ass off in triple digit heat, so it's flowing nonstop right now. It's like uh, I can't quit writing. I'm writing songs, I'm writing poetry, I'm writing every damn thing that you can think of. Uh, my, my novels are getting close, uh, my screenplays are, are getting streamlined or not, uh, because I've been sweating and working. But I also use Talk to Text at work, and I got this old hippie guy, he gave me his, um, he was a really cool guy on the street. <laughs> He gave me his uh, harmonica holder. Oh. And we made, you know, we sat on a bench. I gave him some money because, you know, he needed to eat or whatever. Yeah. We sat, on a, we sat on a bench and we made the harmonica holder into a phone holder. So hmm. while I'm doing uh, certain kinds of work, I can go talk to text hmm. and just fix, you know, the stupidity later, the typos and the, um, you know, bad grammar or whatever it is. And I'll just talk while I'm working. I work alone a lot, so it, it works for me that way. That's brilliant. So stupid yeah. harmonica holding thing hooked to my chest and up around my mouth <laughs> uh, with, a, with a cell phone uh, basically, uh, I don't know, pinned in. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I talk. I talk while I work or I sing while I work or I do whatever while I work. Hmm. And, and then later on, I've got at least uh, the tune or the rhythm or the idea is there. So it's a good thing about working alone. I know you can't do that in an office at all. You know, if you start walking around with your cell phone on a harmonica, <laughs> they're going to kick you out. <laughs> that's really cool, though. That Yeah, that's incredible. I just made my brain yeah, work. But it's, it's just one way to, to keep from the shower problem. You can't write in the shower. You can't write with your hands full of drywall mud. So. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it keeps my phone from breaking, which happens a lot anyway, and <laughs> keeps my uh, my my words coming to me. Right. All right. What else do you have for me? <laughs> So this last one is uh, is a, is a fun question. Um, 
we constantly on this podcast talk about how we're the best writers ever. This mm-hmm. is the best podcast ever. Yeah. Um, and we are plugging ourselves pretty much every time we get on the air. Mm-hmm. Um, so is there anything that you would like to plug? It can be yourself. It can be your writing. It could be your favorite restaurant in Texas. Whatever you want to plug, is there anything that you want our listeners to know about, to check out, to support, to support, yeah, anything? I'm gonna run a list: Reed, Neil Gaiman, Reed, Christopher Moore. Mm-hmm. You know. Also, if you're on, you know, if you're around the Twitter, Reed Sophia or she's a good writer. Uh, read uh, Patrick F. Johnson. Um, that guy's like a sci-fi serial writer, monster writer after his time. Um, you know, go out and find people to read. Read Howie Good if you want to read um, uh, prose poetry or, or um, microfiction. That guy's a master at what you know I do on a regular basis. Um, Enjoyed it yeah, as well. This so has been great. 
So I think that's going to wrap up another episode of Shameless Plugs. Major, massive thanks to our guest, Kratos Jones. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and uh, yeah, reminder to everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, reminder to everybody. Where, did, where, where? Hey, Kratos, where can people find you if they wanna if they wanna track you down? Like on Twitter or are you on Facebook? What yeah, are What yeah, are your Twitter, tags? Yeah, Twitter's where I mess around. Um, the rest of that stuff I just keep for my family, but Perfect. Uh, Twitter is uh, at Kratos Jones. So yes. It's, it's, we you will know, have a link up there to you. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, we'll put a link up there. Outlets, uh, check out Creatus, follow him on Twitter, listen yes. to our podcast, read his work, all that good stuff. Yep. Please. Yes. <laughs> Support Creatus. Yeah, I actually, we... I give out a lot of my work for free on Twitter. I, I yeah. give a lot of work out for free, so come get freebies, come we... get hors d'oeuvres or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> where you can... Uh, eat the big meal and that's yeah. it's those freebies that are why we asked you to be on the yes, show absolutely. i mean that yeah. is where this came from so support kratos mm -hmm. support kratos very yeah. he's doing some good stuff that we we really like we're yep. fans of that's absolutely. why we brought him on the show so uh yes support kratos we'll have the link on our site mm -hmm. shamelessplugspodcast.com and i'm going to make one last plug for us yeah do it Join our hashtag game, hashtag yes, plug yourself please, every Monday. Please, hashtag plug yourself every Monday. They're awesome. They're fun. Just have fun with it. That's yes. all it's about. That's the pur purpose of our show. Dirty, so it's fun. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the, that's the purpose of our show. Yeah. And that's the purpose of plug yourself is to get writers enjoying what they do and loving what they're doing mm -hmm. and talking about what they love about their writing. Our goal with that is just to get people talking about what they're, they love and being excited about their own work. Yep. So... Please join us. Please listen to Kratos' advice that he gave on yes. this show. Um, and we will see you next time. Bye. All right. Y'all be good. <laughs> <laughs>